Hey guys, it's Wednesday, which means I am doing a live. It's 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's also inauguration day, so I'm sure nobody's gonna watch this live, but whatever, I am here for you. I am dedicated, and these, these posts are up here permanently, so you can watch anytime that is convenient for you. So today I got a question about technology in wildlife. What kind of cutting edge technology is used in wildlife biology? And I'm gonna spin it to be more of um, what you need to know about technology in wildlife. I have two people watching, that's awesome. My brother texted me about the inauguration. I was like, no, I'm not watching, I'm on a dog walk. But um, anyway, so technology in wildlife is a huge, important subject. And a lot of people, I think, think about like the gadgets and gizmos, and I'll talk about that a little bit. But first, before I get into technology for wildlife, I want to say that uh, the mistake that a lot of people do with wildlife biology is they think about the, the data collection portion. And a lot of people think that mostly they are like observing animals. They think a lot of animal behavior. That's what I thought of. I, um, Jane Goodall was really the only wildlife biologist that I knew along with Diane Fossey. And they studied primates in the field by watching them. And how technology has changed wildlife biology and science so much is that it has replaced humans so much in both the data collection side and the data analysis side, which is great because we're able to do so much more in a shorter a period of time. But it also, um, if people don't have this this right picture of what it's like, then they're going to going to going to, going to go into a wildlife biology career, um, not knowing what it's really like on the day to day. And in graduate school, they teach you to do your own data collection and everything, so you might have some of that. But then, really, after you graduate, your job um, just so much of it really isn't in the field anymore. And like I said, a lot of those observations have been replaced by um, tech. So some of the big tech that we see in wildlife and conservation biology and wildlife biology is slow compared to the technological advances out there. So one of the things I hope to see is more collaborations between engineers and scientists so we can come up with more cutting edge technology. But what's going on right now, drones are probably the, the newest thing and the most exciting thing, or not the most exciting, but one of the most exciting things. So using drones to survey populations, um, automatically count populations, um, gets you in accessible areas. Um, other ways that we've been using tech for a while, long time in wildlife biology, it's through satellite telemetry, and now the trackers for animals are so small, a lot of them are solar powered, so they can collect location points on these animals like every couple of seconds. Some of them can last for years, so that's a huge improvement. Um, camera traps, that's what I work with. Um, so camera traps, you used to be able to have film cameras and it would only take 24 pictures. Now camera traps take tens of thousands of pictures in, um, a single SD card. Um, so those were the major major ones that I wanted to address. That's the, the main way, sorry, I just had some notes, that, that wildlife biologists use technology. But the part that people don't think about is the analysis part. And that's a different kind of technology. And so, so one is in the way that the data are processed. Oh, I forgot, I remember one more. One more has to do with data collection and the technology is more about platforms that aggregate data. Um, so citizen science projects where you're not necessarily collecting all of the, the data points, but, but citizen scientists are uploading them. So things like eBird and then you are analyzing them. So it's really shifting to all of these like hundreds of thousands, even millions, even billions of data points. So with citizen science, you get a huge volume of data. With these camera traps, I think the, the Serengeti project, I know they had millions of photos. Um, again, with these, with these tracking devices, you get thousands of data points. 
So you're dealing with all of these large numbers and you need the technology to be able to crunch the data. So there's two different ways, or there's, there's two different steps. The first step is in the data processing step. So that's gonna be technology and actually like cataloging the data. So for us with camera traps, we're, we've worked with Google to develop artificial intelligence and machine learning to automatically identify species. So for animals like like deer here in North Carolina, we only have one species, white-tailed deer, and really nothing looks like a white-tailed deer except for elk, and that's only in a very small portion of the state. So AI is really good at detecting deer, and it's like 99.9%. .9%. And therefore, as wildlife biologists, we can say, okay, we're not gonna look at deer photos, and that makes up like 50% of our animal photos. So that reduces the workload a, a lot. Um, I've also seen AI in terms of tracking animal behavior, which is really cool. Like there's this video um, with monkeys and uh, scientists have to score animal behavior, like they score their movements and everything. And there's like different color regions on the computer screen and it tracks the movements of the monkeys, which um, again, I thought was so cool. So then it automatically catalogs those data and then the scientist has to deal with the data. So the biggest change really is the amount of data we're getting, which involves technology on the computer science side. So scientists need more sophisticated statistical models and they are developing them in the lab that I worked in. They are um, thinking about how to integrate all these different data sources. Um, so really, what I want to try to say is, and I have a video about this, is data analysis is huge in wildlife biology right now. And so much emphasis is on not necessarily collecting more data, but what do we do with the data that we already have from these citizen science projects, from museum specimens, even like hunting data, thing, things like that. But again, even if you collect your own data, with the technology now, most likely you're gonna be collecting a lot of data. Things are shifting away from um, just scientists doing stuff. So another example would be when I did my forest elephant PhD research, I had to look at the individual elephants to identify them. Um, so you do that using ear tears and in savanna elephants, their ear tears are really big so you can actually use a computer to, to um, give you a first round of who that elephant is based on their ear tears and, and give you a confidence interval. But with forest elephants, the technology definitely wasn't there yet. I'm not sure if it's there now, but it would take, um, they don't have very, not, actually a lot of them don't even have ear tears. So um, I would have to look at tusk shape and length and ear vein pattern and tail brush and all of those things. So um, great question. I could talk on and on and on about it. And I do talk about technology in um, wildlife biology in my course. So this is, um, it's called Confusion to Clarity. And I offered it in December, but I got some feedback that it was a bad time for a lot of people because um, end of the year stuff, finals. So the, the course is over with the group that I did it with, but I recorded all the videos. So I'm offering those for re-release um, for January now. So they're actually out if you wanna purchase the program. It was at 495 in December, and now it is 127. Because in December I had, we're still doing group coaching actually, so you got a lot more, but 127 is a, a great price. And um, I'm doing feedback right now from everyone and the reviews are just so good. I'm just, I'm so glad that I am helping people honestly because there's just so much that I wish I would have known before I started. My, my career would have looked totally different and I don't regret anything I did because it led me to where I am today. But um, there's just so many different nuances that I didn't know about. So um, I can post some links below in addition to my statistics um, post as well. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you have a question, you can submit it to hello at fancyscientist.com. Or you can email it there or you can go to my contact form at fancyscientist.com. You can also send me a message on social media as well. Thanks guys, bye.